Uh, it gives me an immense pleasure to welcome you to the second edition of the world's largest fintech fest, Global Fintech Fest, organized by Internet and Mobile Association of India, along with its sister organizations, Payments Council of India and Fintech Convergence Council and National Payments Corporation of India. The fest is presented by the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, Government of India and Reserve Bank of India and supported by Niti Aayog, Startup India and Invest India. We would like to thank our platinum partner Visa, AWS, PhonePay, our diamond partner Cred, our country partner Australian Government, our track partners HSBC India and Refinitiv India and our session partner the UK Government Department for International Trade. The second edition of the summit with the theme Fintech Empowering a Global Digital Economy will provide an in-depth understanding of the latest business, policy, investment and technology developments within the fintech landscape globally. We welcome all of you for the session on the Founders Insights Growth Story Journey of a Lifetime. Without further ado, I would like to introduce you to Mr. Anand Goenka, the Executive Director, Indian Express, and Mr. Roshan Povaya, the Editor, who would be moderating today's discussion. And without further ado, again, we are very much pleased to welcome Mr. Lalit Keshri, the co-founder, the CEO of Grow. Dear delegates, please put up your questions on the chat box. The panel may pick up a few in the end and answer to your queries. Over to you, Mr. Goenka. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Very warm welcome, and I'm very excited about this session. It's going to be a short one. Uh, we have about uh, half an hour, um, but but I'm sure we're going to grow a lot through this. Uh, such a silly pun. I'm sorry. I couldn't I couldn't resist myself. Uh, but again, very warm welcome. And Lalit, uh, you know what a journey it's been. Yeah, really, really, it's been fun to watch. Uh, disruptive to some degree. Um, but just before we get started with the with the grow journey, and just to understand what your view on uh, the whole fintech space uh, is going to be like short bit you know um, i've tried to understand a bit about your past um, i can't label you a serial entrepreneur i want to label you a successful one your stint at flipkart uh, and this and, and the things you've done since and how you got to grow um, i mean are you are you a techie are you a markets guy are you a mix of everything like what like what uh, you know what's the recipe that went into making lalit Sure. So thank you so much, uh, first of all, everyone for being here. I think I, I would not term myself as successful yet because there's a lot more like this. We are, we are very small right now, so it's a bit too early. Uh, uh, the best way to describe would be, uh, so I'm a techie, by the way. So I, I, I studied tech and uh, fundamentally idea is how we can impact millions of lives by things that we know and we understand tech we understand building products and that is all i've been doing for last i think 17 18 years like you know how can we leverage technology to create to impact lives of millions of millions of people especially in india i'm really passionate about like solving something doing something for india so specifically on grow um Am I wrong in saying that the journey is going to be to get to a a supermarket of financial products? Uh, and if if that's fundamentally the journey, there are so many people who are, I guess, trying to do this in their own way. Um, is yeah. that the journey? And is that also something that you think is a concern? So we, 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 don't, we don't we like that supermarket term because... Typically, when you buy financial products, you don't go to supermarket and buy. Right? Uh, we we like to call ourselves as like uh, we are a financial services company, internet financial services company, and we are making making financial services simple and transparent for millions in India. And our approach is based on investing. We are investing focused platform. That kind of. Uh, the primary use case is people come to us for investing and we will kind of go so deep on it. Like we will build the best investing destination in the country. So instead of doing like 10 things uh, at a, like a very grand, at a, at a simpler level, we will go very, very focused in investing. And that's what How our position is. How do you identify this uh, space? Like from Flipkart, you know, to come into something in the investing. space, tech space. Yeah. How, yeah. How did you say that this is what I want to do? Yeah, so Roshan, so this is like a long journey. So it's it's a 
in the in the hindsight it's easy to connect the dots but at that time we went through a lot of so i started investing when i was like uh, when i was in college right and one of my roommates got a internship at some listed company i come from a very small city and i was like very very amazed at how you can buy stock of a company and you know part own it like for 80 bucks i bought 80 rupees i bought one one share and was like very fascinated so been been very active in in investing read a lot of books value in it. so that was one data point second data point was then got into flipkart got this amazing opportunity we were very lucky to see how flipkart like grew from a from where it was to what it is you know into 2015 16 it was a very large company so saw that scale for power of internet right so we had some confidence okay we can build consumer products that can scale to millions thirdly then we saw the gap like you know we're just looking at the market understanding there were 250 250 million fd holders in india and 20 million at that time you were take some of them were investing and so on right so a bunch of gaps and then found very crazy set of folks in the in who who shared the passion that that i had for this for this industry so multiple dots connected and last one was why now like i had done a startup before and it was like failed because of the wrong timing but this time the the the, the signals were very very kind of clear like you know digital india aadhaar upi and a lot of things were happening in that 2015 16 so we kind of lucky to grab that also again it's very easy for me to say this in hindsight but at that time it was not that clear now it's easy to frame that and and the you know the valuations uh, that is you know i mean i was we had a at the indian express we had an interview with um nitin kamat uh, a few months ago and i remember asking him at that time about valuations and he was so candid he was saying you know this is just, it's just stupid what's happening uh, these valuations are just you know it's not justified and i don't understand it um i have to ask you this i mean uh, you know i know you don't talk about much but i believe you've done up 140 million so far you've raised you know wh- where do you see these valuations how do you see these things shaping up and and and, and going forward yeah and so I, i again as a, i don't have any strong opinions on values i mean if you look at the markets like 2004 2008 2007 2012 2020 2000, even 2016 uh, 15, 16 i think 2015 when there was so i think we'll go through a lot of phases and so on but i think the way i like to see your how we are grow think about is like very long term so if i if i think about 2020 if we are in 2001 today and if you are thinking about 2021 it will be a very different kind of thing even 2011 if you think about right if you think in 10 years perspective like 2031 2041 and so on right india is going to do really good like we are 2, 2 trillion to 2, 2, 2.5 trillion economy and i think the demographics that we have are like very very we have lot of leverage over what we can what we can achieve in in the future and overall there would be there would be lot more 100 billion dollar companies today i think there's one only one i can count which is hcfc bank but over, i mean in financial services of course and then over time as the markets as the economy scales up as number of people getting into workforce increase we will see lot more 100 billion dollar companies lot lot more 10 billion dollar companies so overall india's economy will expand now valuations again I, i mean i am i am not an expert on valuations but and that's why i don't have any strong opinion they will go up and down but in long term will we do good as as a country as startups i have i mean as an entrepreneur i need to be optimistic there yeah absolutely uh, what about the investors who are getting in on the grow platform do you think they really understand how the markets work or is it because you just gave them an easy option with just a few clicks to buy a mutual fund or a stock uh, that they just getting in and doing it without understanding the fundamentals fundamentals in this yeah so uh, so russian what we try to do is and in fact not just us but lot of other startups we have been trying to focus a lot on education so if you look at content and the education uh, academies and all those kind of things their continuous focus on educating customer in, invest what you understand like you know and lot more long term uh, focus on long term investing grow specifically has been a big big kind of uh, vocal about investing for long term that's why sip is very popular like we we focus a lot and timing the market like experts can't time the market so it's forget about like retail investors like uh, so 
that's the kind of continuous focus and this time i think content is helping a lot in kind of lot of education stuff that is coming from multiple other startups also like you know internet is helping there will be mistakes that will be made <laughs> by first timers but like that can be avoided if we play small if we invest with smaller amounts and so on well the the fintech space you know i mean generally in the internet world the whole digital world you know you see a lot of concentration of power a lot of concentration of power with a few for lack of better working makers right um is that something that concerns you is that something that 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 you think is a big concern to the success of grow or other platforms like grow uh, uh i have not thought too much about it anand but i what i feel is in financial services markets are quite quite democratic like if you look at let's look at the banks listed on the exchange they are like i think tens of banks listed yeah. and then there are private sector banks and so on there are like nbfcs in in look at the fintech lending startups look at wealth startups like right? there are a lot more players so there would be some in, internet economies internet effect that we will see by like you know where less players will have more customers more revenue and so on which is true with any other businesses but i think uh, if i go by the industry like financial services has been quite kind of distributed across so and isn't that yeah. a little bit unique to india compared to other countries for some reason hey no i don't think so look at us for example it's so distributed so many internet startups so many like there is there are in the financial services are, space everything seems to be focused around the three banks in the in the, in the us mm-hmm. right and then you've got your big i banking banks uh, your big i banking outfits are around yeah. them yeah no so i think if we just look uh, on, top of, on top of all our screens i mean the number of logos the number of partners that this festivals got this fintech fest i mean it kind of just dazzles the mind sometimes to think just look at the number of and this is not even like half a number of, i mean they're like 10x more logos out there in this space uh, uh, you yeah. know i mean the number of delegates i i know attending this it's so it's 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 just so many people and so many different you know ways of you know this whole this whole pie different people are looking for different different corners of it um so you you use the word democratic is that do you believe that's rare or that's unusual in india or that's kind of just uh, how you think it is in this space so i feel there would be some concentration like internet will play its role so internet typically is kind of builds larger companies larger because of the brand effect because of the pull effect and so on so that is going to happen but then india is such a large country that there would be companies that will create their own like for example uh, there is an nbfc which is specialized in it's specialized in lending to transport companies right we yeah you know what i'm talking about so there are yeah. banks there is a very large bank which is 100 billion dollar but then there are nbfcs that have created their niche in microfinance there in housing finance there's there's low cost low cost housing finance yeah. Yeah. similar like in, ter- in investing there are uh, there are advisors there are there are robo advisors there there are discount brokers there there are uh there are uh, full service brokers there so there are different kind of and and that's because we have so many and we should be lucky about it there are so many people we can create it's a market of markets like lot more every state is like <laughs> like a market in, in india yeah no, absolutely so where do you see like so so i mean how do you see so so okay so if you know why do you think if you know if you were running a bank if you were running hcb securities or, or some of some or some bank security division you know what do you think holds legacy organization like that back from building a grow so uh, i'll give you just an example uh for first four years we were we did not make any money we were doing direct mutual funds and uh that is something that startup that is that is something a startup can do if you are listed if you are doing quarterly profits quarterly revenue that is just one example i would say right uh grow was built by engineers right i was an engineer i am not a uh, financial so so that is another thing so there, there are a lot of things and that's why like different companies will have different dnas and lot of respect for hdfc by the way we want to we we aspire to become 
uh, become something like HDFC Bank in future. Oh, I, I just said HDFC because that's the first thing that comes to my mind. That's just how big they are. So. That's always the first thing that comes. <laughs> yeah. so so you, my... you, you mentioned uh, mutual funds, and uh, I mean the news is out there. I know you can't really divulge, uh, divulge a lot about it. Uh, the India Bulls AMC uh, takeover. I, I know it's still under uh, you know the CCIS yeah, part of it. You still have more clearances to go. But uh, there's a question also from the audience. Uh, they, what plans Daniel. do you have? India Bulls Daniel Bulls? is asking, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, uh, so see, we feel uh, fundamental belief is that when we started also grow, like we started with mutual funds, we feel that mutual fund is a very, very good product for retail investors. And uh, many reasons, right? There are, it's very, very well regulated by SEBI. SEBI works for the interest of interest of the uh, investors. That's the most important thing. And second thing is, you can start with very small amounts. You can diversify across multiple like you know types, be debt mutual funds or liquid funds, overnight funds, even in equity funds there are a lot also. And there are fund managers who are working. Expense ratios are like not that high, by the way. So. So retail investors get to participate and we believe that it can be a hundred million user product. Mutual fund can be a, and that's why finally we started with that product, right? And we also now feel that we can also kind of play a role there in manufacturing good mutual funds. But again, uh, once the approvals and everything are there, then we will, we will kind of would love to talk more about it as well. But fundamentally that's the thought process that Mutual fund penetration in India would would go many fold from here. Okay. And uh, what's your view on uh, fractional investing? Because you know there are some stocks which are like fairly expensive, and you also mentioned that at the beginning of your career you bought like one stock for eighty bucks and were, were quite yeah. happy with it. Uh, but now you know with some of the stocks prices like twenty five thousand bucks a stock and kind of stuff like that. What's your view on fractional investing? You think that'll really work in India? Because I know it works in the U.S. markets. Yeah. In U.S. market, stock prices are really, really high. Like not just in India. I think MRF, maybe some of MNCs. I mean, if you just take out like 10, 20, 10, 12, 12 stocks, 10, 15 stocks, then rest of all, rest all stocks are very, very affordable. I, I think. But still, uh, currently, I haven't seen that kind of barrier. So we always, as uh, at Grow, we always look at okay, what are the barriers for customer to customers to participate in. Uh, wealth, uh, wealth generation, and mutual fund was that one number one thing. Then stocks, and so on. Currently, we don't see that fractional thing coming in between. And like, unlike, unlike in the US, we have a lot more affordable uh, affordability here. Like HDFC is probably uh, available at like, uh, like I mean, all stock. Let's not talk about stock names, but most of the stocks are like, yeah, yeah. Um, no, so and. Uh, in, in in all of this uh, environment, w- what do you think is that one major differentiator between you know uh, what you do and what others like you do? I don't want to name competition, etc. But is there one particular differentiator? I'm asking this question on behalf of uh, Pratik Daga, risk manager of HDFC Bank. We've discussed HDFC twice already. So. Yeah, yeah. Again, lot of respect for HDFC Bank. So what we do is uh, so yeah. So I think we have a so. We make things very, very simple for simple. We make things simple for the customer. By the way, simple does not mean like everything is easy. You know, still there's a lot of hard work to be done by customers. But we are very customer focused. So instead of thinking any product from a push-driven kind of approach, we have a pull-driven approach. Like let customers make an informed decision. Let me let customers be informed about whatever they are doing. Right. So before buying. Let's say stock or mutual fund, you will have a product page which tells you about everything about that mutual fund or stock, right? And there is uh, any any information that you need to kind of, you should know about that. And then you press the buy button instead of just like, you know, searching and buying and those kind of things. So focus is a lot more on pull driven this thing than then push. We don't call customer. We never call customer, okay, up, co- complete your account. You buy this, buy that. We never do that. We don't advise. We don't kind of push. So that is the biggest kind of thing. And that makes us think very hard on what customers really want. And so that's the, that's, I would say the biggest difference. Second is like, we are, we leverage tech a lot because as I said, like our, our prices are very low. So we don't charge, we make things very, very low cost for customers. That means we leverage a lot on technology everywhere. Right. In fact, that, that was the other question I had. Uh, 
you know what role has the um, uh, entire kyc process been eased by you know aadhar and digital payments and all yeah. that really helped in your kind of growth of grow yeah so i would uh, i have i have told this many times before like i don't think grow would have been possible if we did not have aadhar e sign digi locker so today we are able to onboard so many customers because of uh, because of this infrastructure that digital india infrastructure that we have been made available uh, without this i think to onboard so many customers not just us but anybody would not have been able to uh, do that so far and lalit what is you know so many customers i mean I, I, you know don't show that num- numbers you don't want but but what is the growth here just give us some perspective about you know how big this market potentially can be how big it is today you know yeah. we, we keep hearing india you know this i mean you know but like the size of it today and where you see this kind of going in yeah so see uh, in india again different companies will cater to different so we have 1, 1.3 billion or something right and then uh, grow specifically is looking at uh, building product for the for the middle class right so let's say 300 400 million people and out of that focus more on diy so we don't as i said we don't push products we don't call customers if you need to walk into a bank branch to talk to somebody then probably that's not our customers so our customers like to kind of download and do everything what they whatever they want to do so that that is the segment and i think overall with the penetration of internet with awareness with lot of new age regulations that are coming and everything i think markets will continue continue growing and luckily we are just so small right now that we can continue growing for next 10 years and still like we will not be size of we will probably be size of hdfc bank no but retail participation i mean you know we i mean i keep hearing this right the retail when india's retail participation in markets is you know going up and then it's exploding what is yeah. this exploding what is this like you know if i mean just for a second imagine you're talking to one of your 140 million dollar investor what is that growth that you're everybody salivating around this all these companies on top of us just can you is there is there one one number that just shows what all this uh, you know what the potential of india is see uh, again so let's say uh, the numbers that we talked about about the population and so on i think it's very kind of uh, i feel that would 100 million customers invest in mutual funds in in next few years i think it's possible because the wealth of it, india is going what is it today oh, sorry what is it today it's today yeah. maybe 25 million 30 million on that number right so it's okay. it's it's not very difficult to imagine i mean you can be off by whether it will happen in 3 years or 4 years or 5 years but it will happen mm-hmm. like 100 million people will invest in in mutual funds and then stocks also probably slightly le- lesser but mutual funds is kind of can be a very 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 large uh, market even stocks uh, i think 100 million can invest we look at the other countries for example right the way india is growing so that those are the kind of numbers we again as i said like we are lucky to be in india where we have lot of demographics like demographic advantage over anybody else Sure, and from a regulatory support perspective, you mentioned the Aadhaar and all this stuff really helped get get this stuff off the ground. But are you are you generally uh, happy with the pace the regulators keeping with, yeah. you know, your industry? Yeah, yeah. So I think our uh, so I think regulations have kept a very solid pace with tech, right? And as I said, like Aadhaar, for example, or even EKYC or not ek is for e sign e sign is yeah. like you know with digi locker with uh, aadhar uh, doing kyc with that so all these things are like very difficult to do online grow online if these were not there and a lot of new regulations like margin regulations recently came which will protect investors more on uh, on kind of providing lesser margin to customers and like not doing leverage high leverage and those so a lot of these kind of things are coming up uh and uh, we feel that they have played a big big role in kind of overall uh or the growth of uh, on uh, from abhishek singh who's uh, from tata capital digital product head 
It says grow has always been in the investing space. Any plans for getting into the lending and insurance uh, space? Because that's also a very high growth area: microfinance, lending, insurance. Yeah. So we are a so the 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 problem with startups is that they can't do everything. They can't do too many things. And as I said, like we we are not the type. Okay, we will do this 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 everything ten things at some like you know we we go very deep on whatever we do. So focus will continue to be investing. We'll continue building. So insurance is very far. Like I don't think we'll be doing insurance next two to three years. Lending also like uh, probably we'll do something like uh, which is related to investing. Like you know what not. So we will focus. We'll be focused. Play player here. Um. So so the, so the, so you're happy with the regulators? Generally, what I'm hearing. But yes. I'm, but but you know, how about the SEBIs and the RBIs and you know, is what? Do you, yeah, SEBI is our primary primary regulator, and SEBI has been very progressive. What I feel. Where do you see their mind? I mean, you know, if assuming to tomorrow cryptocurrencies were to be given a complete clean chit, hmm. where would you? Um, no, if, if if government if if there are regulations, then we would love to launch them. Okay. Like, yeah, if investor protection is like taken care of in any product, which is like mutual, that's why we started with mutual funds, which very very nicely regulated investor protection is there, and it can be a million, hundred million user product. Right, crypto can also be hundred million if it's kind of protected. But you're but you're generally encouraging and you're you're supportive of the crypto space. So we don't have any views right now, so we're not an expert. Okay, yeah, I, know, I know that you you still have uh, gold, which uh, I mean these days people consider old school because in fact uh, I've been looking at a lot of younger investors looking at crypto as a more lucrative investment than gold at the present time. Even if you look at the ETFs right now, the gold ETFs have hardly moved. But mm. uh, if you yeah. actually ex- invested in a uh, even in an e- equity-based ETF like a, a Sensex fund, for example, you would have probably mm. made far more money, right? Yeah. So yeah, I think you are right. Like it's very popular right now. But again, we can't do much unless we see some like return regulations around it. Okay. I think there are a few more questions in the in the box. Maybe I'll just um, any plans on giving out multi currency banking services? Keshav Rai is asking this. No, yeah, we are focused on India, and uh, India Indians deal with rupees, so we will be focused on that right now. Okay, Janil is asking any plans to leverage account aggregator framework to give the users one single central dashboard view of his finances. Or well, we are watching it very carefully, uh, like very excited about it, and uh, we would we would we are closely watching it. Like the moment we see something, we would li- love to do something like that. Okay, we got a good question, for, but I'm 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 a little biased when I ask this. I'm from Ashish Aryan, principal correspondent of the Indian Express. Hi, Ashish, I didn't know you're here. <laughs> Uh, it's a good question, I think. What is the current urban-rural customer ratio right now for the company? How does Grow plan to overcome the urban-rural fast internet gap, which despite best efforts from government and all other telcos is still growing very slowly? So Ashish, this is something that if, if we feel something something really proud about is that we, we kind of broke the barrier of, you know, geographies in India. So if you go to like any smaller city, like Grow, is active you can download grow you can you can do whatever research you want and you can invest and and our demographies also show that kind of data so if i so more than 60 percent of our customers are beyond beyond metros beyond top six cities right which was not so if you look at the overall overall distribution of investors in country like you know maharashtra bangalore Southern cities, they will kind of dominate everything. But now we we are, we are getting to northeast. We are getting to like uh, smaller cities, Indore, Patna, Ahmedabad. Like you name it, and grow is you will find th- tens of thousands of grow customers everywhere. Neeraj Gupta is asking your views on micro investments in India. <clears throat> Yeah, we, um, we are still watching like as I said, like uh, mutual fund itself is like you can start with just hundred rupees. Yeah, and hundred yeah. rupees is like a very very like small amount. Uh, 
uh, amount in the country. So I think like micro investment is like mutual funds are, I think, one of the best ways, mass product that I can think of. Of course, there will be a lot of innovations happening and we are watching. Uh, our customers typically are like 5,000 kind of, 10,000 yeah. kind of investments and so on. Yeah. So I'll just ask one last question. I think Swati is looking at me like we have to wrap up. I'm seeing 655. <laughs> so one last question then. Now that your relationship with banks, you know, uh, public or private, you know, how do you describe it uh, and how do they view you? How do you view them? Uh, uh, just walk us through that. I mean, are you, is it, what are the core dependencies, if at all? Yeah. So banks play a very big role in the country and we treat them as partners. So we partner them with a lot of products. So a lot of our accounts are with banks uh, when you're investing the the money have settlement and everything happened to bank uh, or a lot of our amcs are run by bank like actually if you look at them they are so they are our partners uh, when we get into other products also we are doing deposit product with banks uh, which is like fixed deposit flow for very low risk investors can get into it so i think everywhere we see them as very good partners and we are like tech and plus consumer so so we, for them yeah we are, we are like customer customer experience uh, and uh, we provide the best customer experience we help manage managing that and then partner with banks for the same and do banks feel the same way about you i think so like <laughs> that you should ask them but i think i think they are benefiting uh, i feel that they are benefiting a lot if you commoditize this idea of service um, that's so also they're now on an equal platform you know uh, kind of looking at competition on different products and services so is that something that you get from them or they're just happy that you're growing the pie so fast see again so far like uh, the kind of businesses that we are in they are very complementary to complementary to banks and uh, uh, and i think the market is also very large and like yeah. i think ecosystem the there are some industries where and that's what one of the uh, questions that you asked about competition and uh, yeah. there are some industries that actually grow with a lot more players in the industry and i think financial services is one of those and you would see banks actually uh, kind of for upi for example ultimately the payment is done in the bank so upi is growing number of transactions are growing even our deposits and everything kind of banks hold everything right so it's it's actually win win for for everybody in the industry right Cool, great. Roshan? Great. Uh, no, I think we're kind of out of time. time. We're already three minutes over, over time, I think. <laughs> yeah, so I think it's been a great session, Malit. Uh, thanks so much for your insights. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, thank everyone. You. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. bye. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Goenka, Mr. Keshre, and uh, uh, Mr. Poveya for joining in today and making this possible. And of course, you know, sharing across with us some really great in, insights. And thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Keshre, for agreeing or, or rather participating in the Global Fintech Fest. Thank you so very much and have a wonderful evening. And thank you all the delegates for participating and being here and making it possible. Thank you. Thank you.